Okay, we're here with Mark at the Verbo stand. Hey man. How you doing? Yeah, good, good. This stuff looks amazing. I love the, the color scheme that you've got. Yeah, tell us a bit about the gear. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all designed by Mark Verbus, who's a former Booker engineer, live techno person. And so it kind of flows from a combination of Bookler inspired architecture with the interface design, which makes sense for live performance and improvisation. Yeah, so it's very consistent look for everything, obviously. Um, yeah, but the modular, the module in particular that we've got new for this year is the Voltage Multistage 16, which uh, Verbus observers might notice is uh, quite similar to the pre-existing voltage multi-stage here, which is 10 years old at this point, so definitely ripe for a redo. And from the outside, apart from it being twice as long, the architecture looks very similar. And all this, this makes probably no difference to the actual user. The, uh, the underlying circuitry is actually completely different. This is CMOS based, and this is a discrete transistor design. Long story short, that has given us now the ability to select stages with a gate. So what this means is that, whoop, let's start this sequence instead. Okay, so we're just looping around here. So on the old multi-stage, the way we would be resetting the sequence would be with the uh, analog control here. So when we get a gate, we reset to wherever the knob tells us to reset to, or an external voltage. Now, we can do this with the individual gates on each step. So, now I can make a little loop like this. Well, actually, sorry, that's skipping the steps. If I do this the other way around, now we're gonna be trapped in this little loop here. Well, that's nice. But that's, a, that's not going to do much good if there's no way to get out of it. But we like using these uh, slower secondary sequences. Or you could also, if you had logic gates, that would make sense. Or some source of random gates to reset outside of the loops. So every time we get a gate here, we reset back outside of the loop. And so if we extend that further, why don't we make another loop at the start here and reset to inside that loop. So now we're in here. Mm. And so wherever you reset to, we'll decide which loop you're in essentially. That's great. It's kind of really good for different sections of a track, right? Yeah, yep, that's definitely one way to think about it. It's nice having this the sequence stays the same, but you see different angles of it, basically based on when the gates are happening and how you program the patching. So I can just move this around without changing any of the pitch information. And we're gonna get a different angle of the same sequence essentially. So you could definitely take this multiple steps further if you have yeah, secondary sequences and different sources of gates which move at a slower rate than this sequence. Um, yeah, but otherwise, we have the two rows here. This top one is being used for um, the pitch currently, but we have the bottom row, which is zero to 10 volts. I'll just plug this into something random over here. And so now that's controlling the volume of one of the bands on the harmonic oscillator here. The lower section. The lower section, yeah. So yeah, they yeah, come okay. out of their own individual outputs. Yeah. But we can also use the old form of resetting, which I described earlier in concert with all, all these other uh, types of resetting. So it probably won't be so clear when we've got all these other gates in there already, but um, for example, if I took a gate from here, see now 
starts resetting to the start every time this one uh, resets. But we could choose a different part of the sequence and use make a use a more intermittent gate. And so this is then this, the equivalent of having a cable patched into about here or wherever wherever the knob is basically corresponds to where in the sequence you want to reset to. Yeah, so you don't necessarily need to place the cable in to set the sequence, you can use other, this other signal. Yeah, for sure. And we also can uh, connect an external voltage for that as well. And for that I will disconnect some things just so it makes more sense. But, so if we stop the sequence... And... I take these gates out. Hold the strobe button. So now the waveform is scanning through. So you don't need to use, it doesn't even need to be playing for you to be able to move through it in this way. Yeah. So let's get that synced back up again. And it can also be used as a, if we were using it on its own, we can use it as a one shot, whatever you want to call it. It can be an envelope or whatever. So with this enable function, when it gets a gate there, it's going to stop. So that's useful for using this as a secondary sequencer where this can be something which happens intermittently. And something which goes yeah, right. along with that is modulating the time. So we have an input here which modulates the playback rate. Oh, so nice. I'm going to use the second row to control that. And so when I play that, when a slider is higher, it stops the play, it makes the playback slower in this arrangement. But then we could uh, advance this or get it playing again from some other source, right? So if I just advance it once, then it'll play again. So you, even though this is out of time, you could sync it up with other things in your system so that you have this unquantized form of movement, which is still locked to another, you know, tempo source in the system. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that's just about it. I mean, there's basic stuff with how the you know the slide is the, the sorry the switches here decide where the gates come out or the CV comes out of the top row. You can do slides. Um, so if it's in the upward position, it will slide up or down to a CV point. And regardless of where the switches are, the B row is doing what it's doing anyway. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. But that more or less sums it up. I mean, there's sustain, which is like an alternate form of uh, enable, where when there's a when there's a gate high at start, it will stop on sustain. So it's just a different way of achieving the same same thing, where it stops at a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. Great, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Right. It's uh, when is it available now? When it's is not it available yet. We've got three prototypes here. They're pretty close to being the final iteration, I think. Bossman has been saying six weeks. We think that's a little bit optimistic. So we've been saying more mm -hmm. like July. But honestly, it's like a moving target with all this stuff. Yeah. Last year when we had the Sawtooth stack, that was done in like end of August, I think, when we showed it at Superbooth. So I'd say <laughs> anywhere between uh, six weeks and a few months, maybe. Okay, the thing is, is that once, we, once it's done and we have the boards, we do the... Uh, pick and placing ourselves so we can just start doing it when we're ready essentially yeah excellent and do you have any idea of price for it uh i don't know exactly i mean our stuff is definitely on the more expensive end of eurac for sure um this is like sa similar size to this and this is like 900 and something so i assume it would be in that area i also know prices went up recently so <laughs> who knows how high they are yeah but um it's definitely right up there um got a lot of sliders and things like that too but yeah for a certain sort of person it's uh worthwhile nonetheless but yeah hey well thank you very much for showing us mark we really appreciate that thanks for your Looking time forward to the release ciao